welcome down here to my workspace. Today we're going to play with paper clay and stamps. Two of my favorite things. I believe that a stamp goes on everything. So, okay, pulling out my paper clay. First thing I want to show you is my absolute favorite tip for paper clay. This is the um, question I get the most um, about paper clay is how to store it. I use a product called Press and Seal. It's from Glad. You can get it in the grocery store. It works the best really does. I've tried all kinds of different stuff and I always wrap my paper clay completely with this um, press and seal when I'm done using it and make sure I get all the air out. Because it is an air dry paper clay so it will dry up with air. So make sure when you're done I seal it up really well and make sure I get it all wrapped up and then you can put it right back into this container if you want. So, okay. So anyways, got some paper clay out. I always start by kneading it. It kind of just warms it up and gets everything moving and makes it a little easier to roll out. Now the technique I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use this on a card or you could use it on a canvas or anything you pretty much want because it's not very thick. You could actually go into a scrapbook page or actually even make jewelry out of it this using this technique. So I'm putting out my paper clay onto my tray here. You could also put it onto a Teflon sheet. Most of you know I love Teflon sheets. So I don't want this to be too thick so I'm not going to roll it out too much more. Then I'm going to take, I have this awesome swirl stamp. It's a big background stamp. And I like to buy rubber only, and this happens to be from Viva Las Vegas Stamps, this particular um, swirl. I like rubber because you can do this technique really easily, but you can do this with a wood um, stamp or acrylic stamps. But you want a nice deep edge stamp. I'm going to lay it right on top of my paper clay with the stamped, the, the image down towards the clay. I'm going to take my rolling pin again, and I'm just going to roll right over it. And my rolling pin here is actually PVC pipe that I stole out of my husband's garage. And there it is. Isn't that cool? Hope you guys can see how deep that image is. So now I can play with that. I'm going to use just a cookie cutter, but you could um, do this by hand also, meaning just cut it out, cut out shapes. But I'm going to take my cookie cutter and put it into my clay and cut out a bunch of these little hearts. I always make more than I need for a couple reasons. One, if something happens and I make a mistake, I have extras. Two, I just throw them into a bag and that way I always have, you know, images to use at a later date. I don't think I can get another one out of that. Maybe. That one might not be able to use. But pull away all my extra. Now I will actually let this dry overnight. Or right now it's extremely hot where I live, so it'll actually probably be drying about an hour for me to use. But I'm pulling off all the extra, leaving those hearts behind to dry. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And this extra, I would either do a couple things with it, put it back inside, or I would just make a couple more images for myself. So those are going to dry and you're going to come back when I'm when these dry. So talk to you in a few. We're back down here at my workspace and my paper clay has dried completely. First thing I do is sand up the edges and make sure it's all cleaned up and ready for me to do my next step. Now I don't always sand the edges and the reason for that, or sand it in general, is sometimes I like a rough look on the, um, on the actual texture. But this particular one I do want it to be nice and smooth, this technique that I'm going to, that I'm about to show you. So, you can use anything you have, an emery board, sandpaper that you get from Home Depot or stole from your husband's um, workshop, which is where I steal everything. Okay. Also, make sure you get all the extra dust off your 
clay after you've done sanding it. Now, we're going to do this really cool technique that I am calling a um, tile glaze look, and it, the reason I call it, excuse me, the reason I call it a tile glaze look is to me it looks like it's a glazed tile when it's done. So, you need some crystal lacquer, and you need some mica um, powder. Mica powder comes from a lot of different companies. This particular one is from Pearl X, but the other ones I have on my desk are actually from Stuart Superior. Doesn't matter which ones you use, it all works the same. But crystal lacquer, 3D crystal lacquer works the best for this technique. I'm going to put a little dollop of this down onto my Teflon sheet. You can get the Teflon sheets and the crystal lacquer over at Viva Las Vegas Stamps. Then I'm going to take a tiny bit of my mica powder and I'm going to put it right into my crystal lacquer. I'm using a paintbrush to do this technique. And you will play with this how much you put mica in there and how much crystal lacquer you put in there. You really do get kind of a different look on both of them. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start painting this crystal lacquer slash mica paint onto my paper clay here. I remember we stamped with the Viva Las Vegas stamps, the swirl stamp earlier, so you need to make sure you get down into those crevices where the, um, the stamped image went into. I'm so happy with the way this turned out, by the way. I just adore that stamp, and the stamps from Viva Las Vegas stamps are really um, nice and um, etched, so it really works perfect for this uh, technique. Okay, now I'm going to set that aside to dry, because that crystal lacquer takes about 10-15 minutes to dry. Make sure that you have some water on your desk immediately, because crystal lacquer and paint brushes do not get along, and it will completely ruin your paintbrush. So you need to get all that crystal lacquer out of there as soon as possible. You do not want it to dry on your brush. Crystal lacquer is waterproof, or excuse me, um, water-based, so it will come right out of your uh, paintbrush if you get water onto it. So make sure you do that right away. Okay, I'm going to use one of the dry ones because obviously that one's wet. And I'm going to use some metallic rub-ons. These particular ones, you can use any type of metallic rub-ons that are out there, rub and buff, etc., etc. And I am going to use silver for this technique, but you can use any color your little heart desires. And this stuff is really easy. You literally just take your finger and put, get some color onto it. And then you just want to hit the highlights, the tops of your, uh, of the image. Oh, love this look. Okay. Isn't that cool? Okay. Now, <clears throat> I decided to make jewelry out of this because it turned out really cool. And I'm going to use my crystal lacquer again and a jewelry finding. It's a bale. And on my original, here's what it turned out to be. I did paint the back of this and I didn't get a chance to paint the back of this one. So you would paint the back of that. So paint the back of your... Um, paper clay also. Then you're just going to take a tiny dollop of crystal lacquer, put it directly onto your paper clay, and then you can take your bale and you just drop it right into that crystal lacquer. I let it sit for not too long because crystal lacquer, if you use just a small amount, dries pretty quickly. It's when you use a lot that it does, takes a while to dry. And just let that sit off to the side and dry. And when you're done, you can add a chain or um, anything you want to the front to hold it. Chain, rope, ribbon, anything you like, and it turns out like that. That's the one that I did in, I actually did gold, but this one's in silver. Hope you liked. Thanks for stopping by.